And I was looking at Angel this morning. Sabi ko, dahil it's a miracle. Not parang last week ang iksilang ng buhok niya. Pero ngayon, ang haba-haba ng buhok niya. Pero hindi po ganun kasimpleng miracle yung mag-uusapan natin. Not, not yung mga uh, maliliit lang na bagay. But it's a miracle of God. A conception miracle that has changed the lives of everyone in this world. So, glory to God po. And I, uh, this morning, I... I'd like you to close your eyes. Please join me in prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, I would like to thank you and praise your name, Lord God, for truly you are in control of everything. A revelation comes from you, Panginoon, and, I, and you have orchestrated everything, Panginoon, even the song that has been sung this morning, Panginoon, you have orchestrated them. Salamat po, Panginoon. I just pray, Panginoon, that you will continue to cover me, Panginoon, and I pray, Panginoon, that you will open the hearts, Panginoon, and the eyes of, of the hearts of all those, Panginoon, whom you brought here. Open, Panginoon, yung heart namin, Panginoon, to receive your message, Panginoon, that we may use it in our daily lives. Maraming maraming salamat po. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, this morning po, and uh, as you can see, we are all dug up uh, sa ating church. Uh, mga minor na po yan, but there's nothing wrong with it kung gusto mong maganyan. But as long as we know that yung mga greater and more important things na papahalagahan po natin. And uh, I was looking at, uh, well, kung sinabihan ako ni Pastor na uh, if I could uh, uh, be, uh, give you the message this morning sa, sa tulong ng Panginoon, and I just prayed for it. And then I even, when, uh, when, when, when the Lord answered me in prayer, of course, I always seek yung mga elders bago uh, din ako mag, um, mag-reply. Um, uh, and then uh, he has given me this message elders ko actually is younger sister ko pero marami pang iba pero this time the Lord has led me to ask her and she has given me yung pong confirmation na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon and then uh, ang topic po natin before we read it is from Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 55 and uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 55 po. wala pala Okay, so um, uh, and I thank God sa mga apps kasi nakakatulong siya para sa, to give glory to His name. So, pagpasensya niyo, alam ko for those of you who are familiar with these apps, eh, pinagtatawanan ako. Pero, natutuwa po ako dyan sa Picto Lunch. So, puri po yung Panginoon. Bago po uh, natin basahin from the Bible, uh, uh, I would uh, ask you to go straightly and open your Bible to this passage, but I would just like to give you a background po of how he, she has arrived into singing this song that is uh, written in Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 55, how she has bursted out into this praise that gives glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, to our Messiah, to our Savior. But uh, the story of Jesus started po in Luke chapter 1. And I, I just want to give you a big, a quick, big background po of uh, the story of an old couple. The uh, you name nila is Zachary, Zacharias, uh, King James, pero sa new, new, new international is Zechariah. So and Elizabeth, uh, they're an old couple who are never able to have children. They were never able to have children, and then Gabriel appeared to them and announced that they will have a baby who will be the forerunner of the Messiah, referring to John the Baptist. And of course, after the Messiah, it wouldn't be long uh, after the, the forerunner, naturally, yung uh, Messiah will come after that. So, uh, in their story, Zacharias was a priest, and he served in, in a temple. And it was just an ordinary day, talaga. It's, it was an ordinary day for the entire nation. For, for the past 400 or 500 years, there was no divine intervention coming from God. There were no miracles happening. There were no angels showing up. But on this particular day, after maybe 400 or 500 years ago, an angel, Gabriel, appeared to Zacharias. The last time he has appeared in the Old, Old Testament, is kay Daniel po, nung nagpa-pray si Daniel, and that was 500 years ago po siguro. <clears throat> and then the angel Gabriel appeared to him with this birth announcement of the forerunner of Christ. So, uh, at first, of course, alam natin, if you will go to your uh, Bible and read it, pero sa bahay niyo na po basahin, but some of you I know is familiar with the story na hindi siya na masyadong 
nagulat siya kasi they are they're very old. They're probably in their, their yung kung exact age nila was not written in the Bible that probably they're around 60s or 70s or even 80s. So, alam natin na parang bar barren na si Elizabeth. They, if, in fact, uh, people, some people think that they were cursed even though they are serving, they are righteous people. Meron pa rin ganito na parang it appears to most of them na hindi sila blessed but they are truly blessed by God and they are serving in spite of the circumstances of the embarrassment hindi po yun naka, naka hinder sa kanila to serve God and the Lord and they were praying for this has answered their pra prayer and blessed them with a child and not just a child but he is the forerunner of the Messiah and he is John the Baptist so uh of course, not so long, not long after that, in fact, mga six months po after that. Six months. Uh, sa verse 26, Mary, not an old lady, but on the contrary, she is very young. She is only, according to some uh, Bible scholars, she's only 13 years old. Or uh, other, like Kapareo ni John Piper, he, he said uh, he, that she is below 15 years old. So, very young lang po siya. And the angel Gabriel appear to her to her as well she uh, this very young lady na uh, teenager pa lang siya and then uh he, she's from a like a small town lang sa galilee a small town from uh galilee na, uh, that is called nazareth and uh nagpakita sa kanya yung angel with another birth announcement and this time uh is an announcement of the that he will he, he he said that this time the virgin will conceive, conceive without a man and uh, God himself will create a child in her womb whom will be called the Son of God, the Most High, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Napakaganda po ng mensahe ni Angel Gabriel sa kanya. So, siguro, pagkakayo po yun or, or si, who, who among you is 13 years old? Wala, wala pa yata. Wala na. Meron ba 13? Oh, I, I, Angel, hindi ka 13. So, sino yan? Si... Si... Oh, actually, oh, si ha? May 13 years old ko na yan, na, na, na. So anyway, he, she, she's very young. Hindi, kinitig na po dito. Parang ang bata nga. Pero si Ate Diyos, ito ho. 13 years old lang siya. And the angel appeared to, he, to her. Sabi nga nun, the, you will conceive without a man. Okay, yun. Hello? 13 lang ako. Baka, alam niyo, napaka-bata niya pa. But this lady, this very humble young woman, she received this message from God, and of course, uh, sinabi niya sa bandang huli na, uh, what, be it unto me, according to your word. Parang kung tinanggap niya yung sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, but I'm sure there might be thoughts swirling in her mind. There will be mixed emotions. So, paano na yan? Engage siya kay Joseph. Engage siya to be married, and then now, ang position niya is, a, is an unwed woman who is pregnant, it's an embarrassment, di ba? Embarrassment ngayon nga, hindi na masyadong embarrassment yun, pero talaga embarrassment yun during yung time nila. And embarrassment yun sa harap ng Panginoon. And uh, it not only that it might cause yung embarrassment or humiliation from the nation or dun sa community niya, but it might cost her life. Kasi according to Deuteronomy 22, ang, ang, uh, she can be stoned to death kapag ka nabuntis ka ng walang asawa. Kung ngayon nangyari yun, baka maubos konti ang population natin. That time, she can be stoned to death kapag, ka, kapag ka nalaman na, na, na pregnant na siya without a father. And uh, it's, it's also a ground for divorce. Joseph uh, na engage siya could just leave her and uh, pwede mangyari yun. At kahit iwanan pa siya on her own, she still has to be stoned to death according to Deuteronomy dun sa mga law ng mga... Uh, as uh, sexual morals and immoralities. So, uh, pero maybe not just well yung emotion niya. But, uh, and then the, the angel Gabriel advised her to go to Elizabeth and have this confirmation. So, siguro, sino maniniwala sa kanya? Who do you think would believe her? Uh, pag ako, kaibigan ko siguro si Elizabeth Cunyari, I see uh, Mary, and she will tell me that the angel of the Lord came upon me and told me that I will conceive without a man. Would I believe her? <laughs> Hello? Parang 13 ka lang. Nobody would believe her. Or, or uh, parang, uh, it could be, it could be like impossible to man 
but it's possible to God. So God has orchestrated these things. There is someone who would believe her, even actually Joseph, when, she, when he was told, takot na takot siya. He was planning, he was planning to leave um, Mary, nung alam niya na buntis. Pero he's very subtle about that. But in her, in his dreams, the angel Gabriel visited him and explained to, to him that she is bearing the child of God and that she is conceived without a man. So, dinanggap niya yon. And then, so, but someone would believe. Kasi meron pang isa na binisit ni, eh, ng angel Gabriel and that is Elizabeth. So, she was told to go to, to Elizabeth and, uh, and from Elizabeth, she's had three folds of confirmation. Unang-una po, she's had this confirmation uh, from Elizabeth ng um, three-fold confirmation. When Mary, when Mary visited Elizabeth, uh, she's had the personal confirmation. She's had physical confirmation from her, uh, from uh, the baby that has lived in the womb. And she's had prophetic uh, confirmation. In next slide po, kuya. So personal confirmation is when she saw the conception miracle that had occurred through Elizabeth. Pagkita niya kay Elizabeth, uh, buntis siya, ang tanda niya na. And dito, barren siya, alam balita yun na wala silang anak, but now she is six months pregnant. So conception miracles happen, and that's a personal confirmation. And then another physical confirmation came when the baby in the womb of Elizabeth, John the Baptist, leaped for joy when he heard the message about the Messiah's conception, God literally has used that physical animation to the baby ni Sachan ni Elizabeth to live. And in fact, it was a true word from God. And another one po is the prophetic uh, confirmation. Kasi nung, um, uh, when God himself has consumed Elizabeth, with his Holy Spirit, and she spoke of the Word of God, as we would remember, or if you could look at the verse 42 to 45 of, uh, of Luke chapter 1. So, bigla na lang siyang nag-turn ng prophe prophecy. Si, hindi uh, ko siya nilagay dyan. Pero, uh, in Luke chapter 1, uh, if I may read po sa inyo, uh, sa verse 42 to 55, Elizabeth, in a loud Boy, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So, bigla, nagbero siya prophesy kasi the Holy Spirit has consumed Elizabeth. So, whatever thoughts, whatever uh, um, worries that she could may have or she may have at that time, nabura na agad dahil kinonfirm ng ating Panginoon na that conception miracles could happen through Elizabeth, that through the baby, the forerunner of the Messiah that has lived for joy as soon as she, they heard uh, Mary speaking about the Messiah and through the through Elizabeth who has given the prophetic message because she was consumed by the Holy Spirit. Kung ano man yung nag-worry sa kanya, kung papaano man siya, she has lifted it all to God. And because of this, she has burst into praise and glorified God through this song that we will read. If you open your Bible sa uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 55, it says here, Situlay ba iba tayo ng, uh, ng, ng, uh, version. But uh, it says here, Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, for this time on all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. In his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud and the, and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who are humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel. His servant is in remembrance of his mercy 
as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. Puli po yung Panginoon sa kanyang mga salita. Isn't it one of the nicest songs written in the New Testament? Napakaraming song. In fact, in Luke, there are four songs that glorifies God. Yung song ni Mary, song ni Zechariah, song ni Simon, and there's another song na uh, nagbibigay ng glory sa ating Panginoon. But this song is particularly special and particularly the greatest among the songs because it echoes several verses from the scriptures. It echoes the prayer of Hannah. It echoes so many songs of David. It echoes the, the history of Israel. It echoes things that has happened in the past and now she is lifting it up to our Lord, to our God the Father because the Messiah is with her. She has received a confirmation and now she will just burst into praise. Ang dami namin, mamaya i-detail ko po yung uh, confirmation or yung blessing na natanggap niya. But nung na-realize niya kung paano siya ka-bless, and obviously, at her age, at a very young age, she's only 13, 13 years old, she, her mind is saturated by the words of God. Obviously, nag-aaral siya ng Old Testament at her very young age. And hindi lang nag-start yun. I'm sure, uh, bu buhat pagkabata niya, the parents are guiding her to read the laws of God. And I, I just want to give praise to all of you parents who are guiding your kids to read the Bible. Na hindi lang ang, ang memory verse nila, as I was saying to Pagador, nung ano, pambira yung memory verse ng mga anak mo. It's not the common verses that you would give as a child or as a kid. When I was until grade 6, uh, John 3.16 ang palagi kong sinasabi. Pero they would give verses, they would refer to the scriptures, and it means that it's a great testimony to the parents. One time, Mary, as uh, si Cherry has shown me yung, yung uh, devotional book ni Aaron, no? O kaya, nagbigay ka na, we, we were, uh, uh, na-pressure kami sa music ministry. Si Derek, bumili na kagad na mga, bili tayo ng notebook. Nakakahiya talaga. Kung ang, uh, as young as Aaron could have devotional book, and kami, wala kami devotional book. So, our devotional notebook wherein we can write free Pinamigay na just to support those of you para i-guide yung mga bata or yung mga youth sa music ministry to have a devotional life of prayer and reading the Bible with God. So dito po, uh, makita natin, it's not only a testimony na yung mind niya is saturated with the scriptures, it's just it's a testimony of a responsible parenthood, a testimony of his life and devotion to God and her life and devotion to God and prayers is a testimony of uh, of you so many things like, like proven <laughs> okay it's a great testimony of her life devotion parents and how she has been raised by the word of God no he has she has referred to so many uh, echoes of the scriptures saka sa mga prophet writing. So, hindi yan, hindi yan nalaman niya na uh, may, may news, may news na, na dito na I am bearing the forerunner of the Messiah and siya concordance. Concordance. Bago ko kumanta ng praise. Hindi siya ganun. It's not like that that she would look for a concordance. Nasa mind niya. Nasa isip niya. Nasa puso niya yung word of God. Kaya naman she can burst into praise to God. I remember when we were starting sa music ministry, pagbaba namin at nag-song leader kami at wala kang nasabi na kundi hallelujah, kumanta tayo, hallelujah. Wala kang sabing scripture. It's not, kung ginagawa natin personally yon, patay kami dun sa pastor namin. <laughs> Makakarinig kami. And then, uh, I wouldn't mind that kasi she's he is training us. He is, he is training us to become responsible leaders. Anong ipapasa namin dun sa mga nililid namin? Kung ang masasabi lang namin, tumayo po tayo, palakpak tayo, salta. Pwede po yun. So, so ganun siya kahigpit sa amin. And at that time, medyo without, uh, uh, what's the word, medyo, medyo ilag kami sa kanya. Dahil, na naman. Pero nakakatulong yun. And it helps so much. Siguro ganito yung parents ni, parents ni, ni Mary sa kanya. In the, in the same way, I was encouraged dun sa gusto ng mga bata ng notebook na may di susi-susi. Ewan ko kung bakit tuwan-tuwa sila dun. 
Uh, so I I pag nag merong nag birthday kahit na ano bibigyan ko konti. Ang ah, maningi yung mga batang di ko na bigyan na. Pag nga alam ko na birthday, binibigyan ko sila ng diary na may susi and then I will I'm telling them to can you use it para mag ano mag devotion ka kay God and ito yung sulatan mo. Kasi nung bata ako, they are blessed kasi they grew up in the church. I was when I grew up, magdanong mga age, pag meron na kung disusi na mga bay, mga notebook na that time San Rio pa yung sikat, San Rio pa yon, hindi pa paper chase. So pag naka tanggap ako ng ganon, may susi, mm, slam notebook, slam book po to, slam book po to may susi, kasi ayaw ko makita ng mga parents kung mga pinag who is your crush, who is your love, ayaw ko talaga makita nila. Pero nakita ko bandang huli, yung tatay ko nakasulat, who is kasama siya sa slam book ko nung nakakatawa rin dahil na nakalikal ko siya after so many years and then at the back of my slam book nakasulat yung tatay ko meron din siyang sarili so nabasa niya lahat ng mga binagsusulat ko doon anyway, hindi po yun ang story ha but I was encouraging these kids na young as they, as they are ay eh, mag-devotion na sila kay God so that when they grow older and it is their responsibility to look after their younger kids or younger uh, siblings eh, meron silang maipapasa a good legacy. What is better than the Word of God? Di ba po? So, ako man, ganun din sa mga pamaami not have kids at the moment, pero kita nyo naman kay Elizabeth, walang imposible. Pero sa mga mamang kids ko, meron pa ako 20 years. So, uh, I may not have kids, pero I don't necessarily have kids to give guidance to the younger generations. And in fact, sa mga pamangking ko, pag may nakita ako sa kanila na post sa Facebook na is a, a scripture or, or word of God, like, comment, na magaganda. May gusto kang pasalubong, pag may nakita ako sa blight, tawagan ko agad yung tatay nila o yung nanay nila. Ano pinasasabi ni Nini sa Facebook? Ano kamila kayo? kayo? Alam mo yun, nag-reflect yan sa inyo. Nag-leader kayo, tapos ganyan na. Ayusin niya yan. So, medyo ganun po ako at alam nila yun. And, and I know, hindi sila napipikon, hindi sila nagagalit sa akin because I know whatever I do, I do it out of love for them. So, so yun po. Baka malit, mapunta tayo sa slam po po ulit. So, uh, nakita po ninyo, si Mary is a model, model believer. Model believer siya. Balik tayo sa kabila ko, bro, dude. Mary is a model, model believer. She heard a word from the Lord. She believed it. She submitted to it. And she praised God for it. Yun na po yung song na binasa natin kanina. She praised God with the praises that's from the scripture na hindi niya self-made, hindi niya sarili-sariling gawa-gawa lang. But it, it, these are praises that has echoed the scripture. Bigyan po na naubuan yung mga kapatid natin na dumating. Purin yung Panginoon. <laughs> so yun po, no? model believer siya. And ano yung content ng praise niya? My soul magnifies the Lord. Ang dami-dami niyang gustong purin at saka sabihin sa ating Panginoon. It just flows out from within her. From here, makikita natin that there are three things that we can learn about Mary on how to worship God. Not so long ago, we had thanksgiving and worship, di po ba? And I was amazed by what has, has what God has done sa, sa, sa event na yon. I know it has been spiritually prepared for those who are in uh, pre uh, mga nag, nag, uh, prepare at nag-organize noon has been spiritually prepared. Otherwise, hindi tayo papakinggan ng Panginoon sa ating panalangin. I remember on the day at tinawagan ako nito ni Tess. Ni, ni Sabi niya gano'n, hindi ka nag-fasting? <laughs> Pinecheck niya ako nag-fasting ako. Sabi, sa ulo ko kailangan ako medyo nagamot. Pwede ba? Magmahe muna ako. Kailangan, i-require niya ako mag-fasting. Gagkakanta ako doon. And it's important. Kailangan spiritually prepared tayo. And si Mary, here, we know that she's spiritually prepared. Otherwise, it's, it didn't just happen that day or that night. Prepared siya buwat pagkabata. Hindi yung ate natin na mabigyan tayo ng assignment and then nung kalang magpaprepare at magkakram. Otherwise, wala kang tulog. So, uh, prepared po siya. nag out sa kanya. So here we can learn from Mary things na 
ang a-apply natin sa ating worship life. Pagka ba nag-worship tayo, nakatayo lang tayo, nakakalungkot yun. Pag nag-worship pa tayo, naantay mo na lang ma-induce ka ng mga worship leaders dito, and then it's not worship. So, ang at, uh, first po that we can learn from Mary is the attitude of worship. No, yung mga attitude natin sa pag-worship sa ating Panginoon. Uh, for, and there are four, four sub-topics sub, dun sa attitude ng worship natin. There could be more. But uh, based from dito sa scripture natin, that the attitude of worship should be internal. Worship begins with an attitude. It is an inner heart of adoring praise. That is the essence of real worship. External, in external worship, that is just shallow observance of the and, and that's intolerable to God. Pagka pagka akala natin pag tumayo dahil dito performance, then it's not it's not the kind of worship that the Lord is looking for. We are constantly reminding po yung music ministry and sa Saturday every Saturday after Saturday nag nagkakaroon ng uh, pagtuturo in preparation of our spiritual life. Otherwise, we could not lead you to worship in spirit and in truth. Pero, you should not be dependent of the worship leader because you have to do something yourselves para maka-worship tayo sa Panginoon in a manner that mag-glorify ang ating, ang ating Panginoon. So, her worship was internal. It comes from the heart. It comes from her mind na alam niya yung mga verses. It comes from her soul. It comes from her spirit. And para bang everything na nasa loob niya has been orchestrated <coughs> nakapareho ng mga musical instrument natin everything has been orchestrated to create a harmony all that is within her has been orchestrated to create and burst out into praise and this is what she said my soul magnifies the Lord my spirit joyces in my God my Savior for he has done great things for me and, the, and all will bless me generation after generation and then Napakaganda ng papuri niya sa Panginoon kasi she realized na she had been saved. She has been saved by God. The salvation that has been prophesied from the Old Testament is now coming to the crescendo. It's coming very soon and nasa tiyan niya na yung mag, uh, magbibigay ng, ng salvation, magre-redeem uh, sa bawat tao sa kanila mga kasalanan. So it was internal for an ayon, it's not superficial. Hindi lang siya, hindi lang siya bigla, hindi lang siya show. Ang pag-worship natin is our life. Sabi, palagi namin pinag-uusapan dito, life, yung uh, worship is a lifestyle. Whenever we're at work, in school, kung saan tayo, whenever, whenever we are asked to give our offering, that's an act of worship. Whenever, however we treat other people, that's an act of worship. However we treat our family, serve church for small things, that's an act of worship. So, worship natin sa Panginoon. And whenever something think, somebody says to us na ganito, na, na di ba, pinibigan tayo ng praise, glory to God. Kasi this is for the Lord. Whatever we do, this is for Him. And uh, it's it's all of our inner being. It's like, uh, kagaya sinabi ko, parang instrument na creation ng harmony. Kailangan mag-start from the heart. Kasi, uh, he said in his word in Isaiah, the people draw near me with their mouth, with their lips, they do honor me, but every move of their heart is far from me. We could worship, I could be good here speaking, pero there's also a chance na malayo pala yung puso ko kay God. And it's not all, it's not because or always na nandito ako sa church, ibig sabihin, I could worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But only God knows that. So, not only that his, her worship is internal, it's also intense. Yung mga words na ginamit niya, yung mga echoes of scripture, it was intense. Napakaganda. And I'm sure when she was singing that, or when she was praising the Lord, there was no Jeremiah, there was no Jerome to play and accompany her. Na ako medyo medyo dependent <laughs> Para matakpan ng konti yung poses. Pero the Lord does in mind kung hindi medyo sabay-sabay poses mo. Basta yung worship mo is coming from the heart. Napaka-intense ng worship niya. Napaka-intense ng mga sinasabi niya doon. Napaka-intense ng message niya because intense talaga yung gagawin ng Panginoon. He is going to give salvation for those who believe Him. He is the Messiah. He is Jesus, the Savior. Yun yung pangalan niya eh. Diba? 
Jesus is Savior, si John, ang pangalan niya, uh, the Lord is gracious. It means the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious to um, Elizabeth. Dahil nawala na siya ng embarrassment and bless siya with the child. Jesus means Savior. So, uh, pagka, di ba, kapag ka tayo, if, if uh, you can worship God, na, you can worship God ay, na, dahil siya yung creator mo, you can praise Him dahil He has healed you from disease, He has helped you with your problems, pero, He can do all that, but you may still have difficulty in worshiping, worshiping God kung, kung He can do all these things for, for you, and yet, you will still burn in hell because of your sins. Pero hindi na po. Na-worship niya ng intense ang ating Panginoon because she realizes that she will be delivered from her sin. And then, napaka-intense na worship niya. Have you seen people who intensely worshiping God? Not only pag-ador, pag-ganag-running match rito. Kasi, it has come to our realization kung gano'ng pagaling ang ating Panginoon sa buhay natin. Not only, alam niyo, eh, meron ako mga, sa church namin sa Pilipinas din, pag nag-worship sila, oh my God, yung tatay ni Cherry, tumulumayo lang yung kaming konti. Kasi, may sakit yun. Pagka na, ano, may hina lang yun. Pero pagka nag-worship na siya sa Panginoon, my God. So, parang mas malakas pa sa worship leader yung amen niya. Eh, nakaka-bless po yun. Nakaka-bless talaga yun. Uh, it doesn't ma matter of his condition. It doesn't matter dun sa condition niya. Kung, kung, it doesn't matter kung, kung hiwalayin siya ni Joseph. Basta alam niya, God is in control. Alam niya, si Lord ang mag-aayos ng lahat. That's why she can worship intensely. Hindi na siya na-induce. She was induced by the goodness of God. So, if you come here, at ang worship natin, ay yung Sunday morning worship lang, that's a joke po. Ang worship po, hindi, hindi po kailangan i-induce ng mga worship leaders lang. It has to come from within your heart and you have to worship intensely the Lord Jesus Christ for what He has done in your lives. Another thing po na makita natin dito as uh, the attitude of worship, it has to be habitual. It's also habitual. And from verse 46, sinabi niya, My soul magnifies. Present tense po. Magnifies the Lord. Magnifies is an ongoing worship. It's continuous. Hindi niya sinabing, My soul magnified the Lord. Dahil nung nareceive niya yung conception birth announcement or yung birth announcement. But present tense po ang ginamit niya. Magnifies. Hindi mag, hindi, hindi depende sa, circum, it's not dependent on our circumstances. Hindi siya circumstantial. Habitual siya. It flows from within us. It's intense. And hindi kahit na ano nangyayari sa buhay natin, we, whether we have problem, whether we are inflicted by diseases, whether there are people na, na is against us, it doesn't change the fact that the, that the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us. It doesn't change the fact that He is our God, our Savior, our Redeemer. So kahit ano nangyayari sa buhay natin, we ought to worship God in this manner. Habitual po yung worship. And... Uh, uh, last time na nagtuturo si Brother Rodel sa, sa, sa um, Bible study, napakaganda ng topic. Medyo related, no? Sa tungkol sa praise. Kasi sabi nga sa psalm tayo, di ba? Psalm, di na naalala ni Rodel. <laughs> Hindi, naalala po niya. Siya po yung nagturo. And sa psalm, sabi nga nun na nagpa-praise yun siya kay God. Hindi siya nakikipan na sa Council of the Unbeliever. Anyway, uh, para daw siyang tree na nakaplant sa uh, beside ng water, and uh, yung fruit niya, eh, yung leaf niya ay nag-flourish. Hindi siya word for word, but you know the meaning niya. Psalm chapter 1 to, no? And, and it's about living a victorious life. And sabi niya doon, victorious life is about, is living a life na kahit ano nangyayari sa buhay natin, if I live, I live for Christ. If I die, I would die for Christ. Whether I live or die, I will do it for Christ. So, ganun po yung worship na hinahanap ng Panginoon natin. So, habitual siya. Not only that is uh, internal, not only that is intense, but it's habitual. And uh, kahit anong gawin natin, kahit anong circumstances ng buhay natin, the fourth element, ay fourth po na attitude ng worship uh, na makikita natin through Mary is yung, ano? Ha? Uh, nandun pala eh. <laughs> so, humble siya. Napaka-humble niya. Ano sabi niya dito? He li for he lives 
the lowly and he's done great things for me. Uh, he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Ibig mo niya sabihin, sinasabi niya na humble siya, na, na, na siya mismo, but he was, she was saying, she was saying kung ano yung social status niya. In fact, she was a nobody. But kasi na, sa, no, at that time, she came from a poor, small town, Nazareth of Galilee. Wala siya talaga. She's not even, uh, yung mga figures na that time na mga ma mababasa natin na si God. She was a nobody until God has given her this blessing. And in fact, even after ng, even after ng, um, Birthday Christ, she, she was still like, hindi naman siya talaga nakasulat sa Bible that has been adored. He has never been an object of adoration sa Bible. Kahit na dun sa Acts, nag-blend lang siya sa mga churchgoers. Walang special thing na nakarecord sa Bible about Mary that has to be adored. And in the other faith right now, alam ko, alam nyo, that Mary, they are they are professing that she is the core redemptive set. Kaparayo, kaparayo siya ni God na nag-redeem siya ng sin. Hindi po. And they were claiming na, na that Mary didn't die and she just ascended to heaven. Yung assumption of Mary. You know, they were claiming so many things na, na not true about Mary. That there's nothing in the scripture written about that about Mary. And kapag siguro nagbubuhay si Mary ngayon, she will be very disappointed with, on how people praise her. In the same manner that Paul uh, Paul, when the people started praising them because of the miracles that they were doing, she, they tore their clothes off in disappointment dahil nabibigyan sila ng glory instead na yung God yung mabigyan ng glory. So, dito makita po natin na uh, yung humble state niya is upon the realization that she is nobody. She came from poor, from the poor. Kahit na, yes, she was singularly blessed and no other woman can receive that blessing na magkaroon ng mes na maging mother ng Messiah. She, she was, she came from the line of David, but ang dami pa rin sa line ng David, na line ni David na poor. So, Mary was a nobody at that time, and she knows that. Hindi lang yung social status niya yung na-realize niya that she's a nobody, she even realizes that she's a sinner herself. No? Sabi niya, uh, my spirit rejoice in God. Wow, my Savior. God bless you. God bless you. Girl. And then, my spirit rejoice in my God, my Savior. Alam niya, kailangan niya na sal salvation. She realized that she's a sinner. Even though saturated yung mind niya with the laws of the scripture, maybe that's why she knows she's a sinner. And during those times, the Old Testament, if you sin, you die. Diba? Pero ngayon, ang ating Panginoon, we are enjoying yung, yung, yung uh, love niya. Yung, yung uh, that we can live even though as a sinner. Diba? Kahit na yung mga, mga sinner, they, they still enjoy what benefits we could have in this world. So, everybody else enjoys that. She realizes not only social status niya is low, she realizes na sinner din siya, contrary to what has been professed dun sa other faith na sinless woman siya. She's a, meron din siyang sin. Kasi yun ang nakasulat sa Bible. Pero, andito na yung savior niya, na kahit sinner siya, kaya siyang iridim ng ating Panginoon. So, because of that, yung attitude niya, uh, she realized kung gano'ng kabig yung God. She does, she realized yung gano'ng ka great yung God and then it will humble her. But there are two things that, there are two things that uh, hinders worshiping God. And definitely, yung ignorance natin, if you don't know the God you're worshiping, and it's a pity there are many people who go to church but don't know God, don't really know God. No, the guy na palaging sinasabi dito, it's 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 different when you heard of God. It's different when you know Him, know Him from the Scripture. Ko ano yung gusto niya, ko ano yung law niya, ko ano yung gusto niya maging submissive tayo, ko ano yung gusto niya ipa-obey sa atin, ko ano yung gusto niya ipagawa sa. Ah, uh, kasi they keep on remembering the old bitterness or the or the hurt that has been done to them, and they are on the edge of bitterness. 
Naging pinay na sila, hindi na sila makithankful kay God. Nato na sila, hindi na sila makaworship kay God. Proud people can never be thankful kasi ang layo ng heart nila sa Panginoon. Akala nila sila lang ang talagang dapat ni worship. So, ang ang kalaban natin to truly worship God is maging pag naging proud tayo. So, kailangan talaga, we have to humble ourselves. We have to realize our brokenness, our nothingness in the same manner that Mary has realized her nothingness. Proud people can never be thankful because they just want to strike back to any people who would offend them. O, paano tayo makaka-worship pag ganun? If these things, things like that could happen, sa buhay natin, na, yung Bible pa rin yung blueprint natin on how are we gonna deal with this. Pero, if, if you want to truly worship God, the attitude that God wants us to develop is humility. Humility, that our worship should be habitual, it should be intense, and it should come from our inner being. So it just flowed from the heart of Mary. It just flowed from within within her. She just burst out into praise, diba? So anybody who is a true worshiper is a person who is selfless. The more selfless we are, the more likely that we can worship God. So ganun po si Mary, no? Sa verse 42, it was because God saw her unworthiness, her sinfulness, her loneliness, He has given her a singular mercy. Siya lang ang babaeng pinagpala sa babaeng lahat. Pero, pero, dali nang siya lang ang babaeng na pinagpala. But if it has happened to her, bakit nangyari? But why was she blessed? One time, there was a, in the crowd, in the crowd, sabi niyang gano'n, Jesus, blessed, blessed is the womb that bore you sa Luke 11. Sabi ka na sa kanya, Jesus, kay Jesus, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast who nursed you. So, she tried to uh, adore Mary and then uh, just give praise and bless her. But, pero ano po response ni Jesus Christ sa 26-27 ng Luke 11? Uh, you, hindi na natin, baka mali pa yung masabi ko. Luke 11, 26-27. Sa 27 po. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nourished you. But Jesus replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Someone is trying to adore Mary here, pero ang response ni Jesus Christ, she is blessed because she, hear, she has heard the word and she has obeyed the word. So, alam na natin kung ano yung key sa blessedness. Alam na natin kung ano yung key to be blessed by God and that is to hear the word and obey it. Di po ba? So, uh, yun po yung attitude ng worship that the Lord is looking for na sa bawat isa sa atin. Another po ay yung object ng worship natin. So, this is another thing that we can learn from Mary. Ano yung, sino yung object ng worship niya? Sino po? Ah, si God. Di ba? Si God yung object ng worship niya. Pero, anong object? God, who? Which God? Alam I mo, mean, which of the attributes of God can make you truly worship her like Him like this? Kasi di ba? Uh, if He has created all these things, like sinabi ko kanina, He can be your God, the Creator. He can be your God, the Healer. He can be God who bless you. He can be the God who have moved your mountain. And that these are all praises to God. Wala masama yon. Pero if He is the God. Who has redeemed you from eternal damnation? Di ba mag burst out din kayo sa sa praise kay God? Ang of Mary is saying, God is my savior. He is not just my savior from illness and sickness and trouble in life. God is my savior from sin. That's what she was trying to say. God is my savior. And the child named Jesus, sa Matthew chapter one twenty one. Naka, nakasabi po yan na siya ang magsasave sa atin. He will save his people from their sin. 
Mary is worshiping God and as a sinner because she is so thrilled that God will save her from the sin. Di ba kayo nati-thrill na hindi na tayo magsasuffer dun sa sa hell is real na napakainit? Di ba tayo nati-thrill? Kaya hindi tayo maka-worship in the same manner that Mary worshiped God? Maybe, kailangan natin ibalik yung lesson about salvation. Kailangan magkaroon ng Uh, event or the evangelism ministry to remind all these people here how God has saved us. Because if you have come to the realization kung paano ka pinatawad ng Panginoon, you will just burst out into praise. Pag yung praise talaga yung nararamdaman natin sa loob, oh my God, Lord, hindi ko na, hindi ko makayanan to na ang, ang ganito lang ako and yet you're doing this for me. I was a sinner and yet you are blessing me. I am no longer I don't know, I don't I don't belong anymore to hell. I don't belong anymore to eternal damnation. Pero meron pang eternal life. Maybe we have to realize that para mag mag-worship natin yung Panginoon na bigay toto. Si Pastor tuwa-tuwa do sa wala si Pastor. Do sa Thanksgiving worship natin. Sobrang tuwa niya no meeting. Sabi niya gano'n, kailangan, gano'n yung worship natin na hindi na kaya tayo kailangan maghintay ng gano'ng kalaking event para ibigay natin yung worship natin sa Panginoon. And you know the songs that we were singing there? God is mighty to save. Forever He will, go, will, will glorify yung resurrection niya, yung salvation niya. Kasi if we come to realize na He has saved us, oh God, baka magsitayo kayo dyan at magsasasayaw kayo sa gala at magpupuri kayo sa Panginoon. And kahit na pag sinasabi na itaas ng worship leader yung kamay, hindi ka ba yung nagtataas kasi hindi cool, itataas na natin yung kamay natin. I can't help lifting my hand in praise to God kasi na, alam ko napakabuti niya sa life ko. When pastor has asked me to give this message, I feel like wanting to say no because I have other things to do. But the Lord has blessed me so much in my life, I cannot say no to any word that He will give me that will that will declare yung goodness niya. So, hindi ko talaga ma- matatanggihan. Kasi, I- I've spoken to my sister, sabi niya, Aga, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Oh my God, amen. So, and, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mas ba tayo na, mga kapatid ko si Dada. Uh, and then, immediately nag-text ako kay Pastor. Sige po, Pastor, magtanyo na lang po ako. Kasi, I'm not used to this, but God will help me in everything that we do yung sabi ni sabi nung sa pag-aralan namin ng Friday, He will turn everything that you touch into gold if you seek Him first. Kahit ano bagay. If it was not meant for you, if it's not given to you, God has a better plan for you. God has a better plan for us. Di po ba? So, ang object of our worship is not Mary. Sabi ko sa inyo, baka magalit si Mary sa atin pagka nakita niya na pinaglululuhodan natin siya And she will be truly disappointed kasi ayaw niya yun, humble siya And yet, people are praising her, nagkamagawa-gawa na ng istorya na hindi siya namatay, nag-ascend sa heaven, and co-redemptor siya. Walang ganun sa Bible. And once in our life, we believe that, and maybe now that we know the truth, we can share these people kasi they are in, they are being cheated of the truth. So this alone could 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 make us share the gospel to them. Makaka-worship tayo sa Panginoon through sharing the gospel. So, uh, He is our Savior. Siya lang at wala nang iba yung object ng adoration natin. Hindi, I'm not here to adore or or any one of you. Or or you're not there para ma-please ako. But we are all here to worship God and adore Him. Only God as our Savior and everything else will follow. Yung thankfulness natin, pag pinagaling niya tayo sa sakit, it will follow knowing that He's our Savior. Yung, yung pag-bless niya sa atin financially, yung provision, it will follow kung praise tayo sa Kanya upon realizing that He has saved us. So, uh, next po, um, yung motive for, for worship ni Mary. No? The three, three things that we can learn from Mary, una yung ano una? Nakalimutan na natin? Attitude. <laughs> Attitude ng worship niya. Pangalawa, yung object. Object of worship. Pangatlo, 
motive, motive of worship. Bakit niya pin-raise si God? Although some of this I've explained already to sa earlier na explanation. He, sa verse 49, for what God is doing for her. Pangalawa, for what God would do for others and for what God has done for others in the past. Sa verse 49, makina natin yung verse unang-una po. Uh, yung um, Luke chapter 1 verse 49. Nainip na ba kayo? Lapit na po tayo matapos. Ito mga kaibigan ko, mahal na mahal ako, nalaman nila. Uh, Pastor has asked. Can I ask for prayer? Oh, pray ka namin. Siya mo lang. <laughs> Meron pa tayong gawain after that. So, ay, nataposin ko na ito. Okay. Alam, alam, alam ko, alam nyo na po yung message. If, if it's necessary to make it longer, the Holy Spirit will make it longer. But I know you've, come, you've, you've received the message already. So, 149. It says here, For, mighty one, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Diba? Bilnes siya. She was singularly blessed by God to become the mother of the Savior, and she is blessed that she was redeemed from, his, from her sin. Pangalawa, for what God would do for others. The verse 50, His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. Dito pa lang sabi na ni Mary na blessed tayo na mga susunod pa generation kasi you will experience salvation through the birth and death of Jesus Christ. And pangatlo po, for what? God has done for others in the past. Ganun sila minsan mag daw according sa Jewish phrase, minsan present, future tense, and then past. So, he is just praising God for what He has done for others in the past. Dito sinabi niya kung paano, she saw the mercy. Diba, alam, niyo, alam niyo yung nangyari sa mga lowly in the past. Alam mo nangyari kay Job. Alam niyo yung nangyari sa mga life ng mga nasa Old Testament who has been regarded as lowly and humble, but the Lord has blessed them. And even those in the past, they will receive salvation. Those yung mga nag-keep ng law. And lalong-lalo na tayo. Na-enjoy nga ng mga sinner yung, yung ano, eh, blessing ni God eh. Nag-holiday-holiday din sila, di ba? Kasi ganun talaga yung design ng ating Panginoon. Gusto niya ma-experience natin to until such time when... Uh, someone like you and me will share the word of God to them and tatanggapin nila ang ating Panginoon sa kanilang puso. Then they will have the salvation na kailangan, kailangan ng bawat isa sa atin. And when they receive it, and they will realize na hindi na sila naka-design for death, for the wages of sin is death, then they could start worshiping God in a manner that Mary has worshipped Him. So, Mary saw a history of mercy in the past. She was experiencing mer mercy in the present, and she saw mercy for generations to come. Ito mercy and grace, palagi natin nadi-discuss to. And uh, she is looking at her redemptive history. She is worshiping God, who is a Savior, who is saving her at that present, and will save generation. And it is incredible na um, she can see all the more redemptive history ng God sa Israel. Yung, yung fulfillment ng Abrahamic covenant, dito sinabi niya sa banda huli, for Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said for our fathers. Alam niya yung covenant kay, kay Abraham na, I will bless your generation after you. So alam, alam na alam ni Mary yung word of God. Siguro yun talaga yung sekreto, hindi siguro. Sigurado yun talaga yung sekreto para ma-worship natin yung Panginoon. So to conclude, Mary's song is a beautiful reminder. I would ask the musician to come here and I will ask you to sing this song and realize what he, this is the very word of the scripture. May I ask the musicians to come up here? Mary's song is a beautiful reminder of all that God has done for us. And has promised to do for those who follow after him. When you realize kung gano'n tayo ka makasalanan and what God has done for us, you should just burst out into praise. Or maybe kailangan natin ibalik ulit yung message of salvation dito sa Paltin. Kung hindi natin kaya i-worship yung God coming from our heart, kung hindi natin kaya yung ginawa ni Mary where she just sings 
praise out of her exceeding joy, there must be something wrong with us. Because there's nothing wrong with our Lord. So now I would like to invite you. We may not have a good voice. You may not have a poetic way of saying words in the manner that Mary says that. But it doesn't matter because God made you and He loves to hear you sing right now, right here. He loves to hear, hear you give praise and glory for God has given you the wonderful gift of salvation which is commemorated by the entire world ngayong holiday season. And that salvation is through Jesus Christ. May I invite all of you please stand up. And this time as we sing this song, nasa na yung singer natin? As we sing the song, let us be reminded to gano'ng kabuti yung Panginoon sa buhay natin. Lord, bless your holy name, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you have shown us, Panginoon, a model believer in the life of Mary, Panginoon, whom people have tried to praise, Lord God, but you have led them to, to the truth, Panginoon, that you are the only object of adoration. Lord God, I praise you, Panginoon, sa mga oras na to. And let us sing these songs with gratitude from our hearts, Lord. Watch your people worship you in spirit and truth. Open your eyes upon them and let the blessing and mercy fall upon them, Lord God. Lord, we want to praise you with exceeding joy from our hearts. So, hallelujah, Lord God. Let the words be.
that you have gifted them. Panginoon, his, this, these are your people, Panginoon, whom in their hearts are praising you. Glory God, for your birth has brought us, Panginoon, deliverance from death. Your death, Panginoon, has given us life, Lord God. Should we be reminded of that every Sunday, Lord God? Should we be reminded of that, Panginoon, every time people will stand here, Lord, help us, Panginoon, that during the times that we are so alone in our room, Lord God, we could find our time to devote our lives unto you and read your words, Lord God, and pray with you, Panginoon. Lord, help us to truly examine your words, Panginoon. For truly the gift, Panginoon, of blessedness comes from obedience to you. And the gift of blessedness comes, Panginoon, from hearing and knowing your words, Panginoon. Lord God, let no ignorance hinder us from praising you. Let no pride, Panginoon. Let no crown. Let no, eh, let nothing that we have attained in this world, Panginoon, hinder us, Panginoon. Let this family, whom you bless with children, Panginoon, whom you bless with this lovely little ch children, Lord God, find, let them find these children a blessing and praise you, Lord God. Let them find them no hindrance to coming here and worshiping you, Lord. Panginoon, we may be so busy with our lives, with our with our works, Panginoon, but let everything, Panginoon, na pinagkakabalahan namin, let our work be our missionary field, let our school be our missionary field, Panginoon, to declare your goodness and your salvation, Panginoon, to people. Lord God, if we cannot truly worship you, Panginoon, because of what you have done for us, Lord God, I just pray right now that you will change our hearts, Panginoon. That you will soften the hearts that has become stone, Lord God. Lord God, you have the power to do everything. You have the power to do what is impossible to the eyes of man. You have shown us, Panginoon, the conception miracles, Lord God. Whatever, Panginoon, needs to be done, be done in our lives. Lord God, hindi kami makakuri sa'yo. What's stopping us, Lord? What's, is it our financial worries? Is it our relationship to people that's hindering us to worship you? Lord, remind us, Panginoon, that nothing is more important, Lord, than the salvation that you have already given to us. And I pray right now, in Jesus' name, that whoever has received you as their Lord and Savior would come and pray and accept you in their hearts, Panginoon. And let the Holy Spirit, Spirit move into them, Panginoon. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name that you will manifest in the lives of every believer, Lord God. That you will manifest in our worship, Lord God. That you will manifest, Panginoon, in every word that He will say here. Every time, Panginoon, na gagamitin namin yung hands namin to play instruments to you, Panginoon. Let it be a worship that glorifies you. Lord God, let it come from our hearts, Lord. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon. And right now, Panginoon, as we commemorate, Panginoon, your birth mo, let us be thankful from the bottom of our hearts how you have blessed us, Panginoon. That your birth, Panginoon, is truly the most wonderful and precious gift that we could ever receive. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Lord, from this day, 